In this video, we are going to discuss residue theorem to calculate inverse jet transform. Up to now, we discussed three method, general method and long division method and partial fraction method. General method, we done so many problems on that, how to decode the samples from the given equation of jet transform. And after that, if rational jet transform is given, long division method or partial fraction method we can use and here one more method is there. So, this method we will specially use when they are asking the value of the jet transform at any instant of time. So, here this is residue theorem, this is the equation for residue theorem, x of n is equal to summation of residues of x of z into x of z into z power n minus 1 at the pole of residue. So, this equation may not be understood now, if we consider one example then it is very clear. So, here I consider this example x of z is equivalent to z power 18 divided by z minus 1 by 2, z minus 1, z minus 4. So, here this is our z transform of any signal x of n. Now, we need to consider the inverse z transform, find the x of minus 16 value. That means they are not asking x of n, x of n at some instant of n is equal to minus 16 they are asking. So, in that type of cases, so if any value they are asking, if they are asking any particular value of the signal then you can go for this method. So, here residues are nothing but whatever the denominator groups are there, those are called as residues. So, here I am using residue theorem directly directly to write inverse jet transform. So, x of n is equal to residue of x of z. First residue is z minus 1 by 2, z minus 1 by 2 into h of x of z, residue of x of z into x of z, x of z means this is x of z, z power 18 into z minus 1 by 2, z minus 1 and z minus 4 into z power n minus 1. This is one residue at, at the pole of residue. The pole of residue is z minus 1 by 2, the pole value is 1 by 2 at z is equal to 1 by 2. Now similarly, so here we can write like this plus, so here the second residue is z minus 1, z minus 1 into x of z means again z power 18 divided by, so here z minus 1 by 2, z minus 1 and z minus 4 at the pole z power n minus 1, do not forget to write z power n minus 1 at the pole z is equal to 1. In the same way, third residue is z minus 4, residue of x of z, third residue of x of z into x of z is z power 18 by z power uh, z minus 1 by 2, z minus 1, z minus 4 at z is equal to 4. So, now this is the residue theorem we are having. So, we consider everything here. So, now here this is equal to z minus 1 by 2, z minus 1 by 2 is going to cancel, z minus 1, z minus 1 is going to cancel z minus 4, z minus 4 is going to cancel. So, here z power 18 into z power n minus 1 divided by z minus 1 into z minus 4 at z is equal to 1 by 2, z minus 1 and z minus 4 at z is equal to 1 by 2, this is 1 and another one is z power 18, z power n minus 1 divided by z minus 1 by 2 z minus 4 at z is equal to 1 plus z power 18 here we forgotten to write z power n minus 1 z power n minus 1 divided by z minus 1 by 2 z minus 1 z minus 4 at z is equal to 4. You can see if you consider z is equal to 1 by 2 here what you are going to get? So, if you consider z is equal to 1 by 2, here you are going to get 1 by 2 whole power 18 and 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1 divided by 1 by 2 minus 1. 
So, 1 by 2 minus 1 means 0 0.5, 0 0.5 into 1 by 2 minus 4. So, you are getting another negative value 3.5, you are going to get 3.5 minus 3.5. So, like this. So, everything you are going to get like that. So, here if you observe, no need to calculate this also, they given a condition according to that condition you need to follow. X of z converges for mod z is equivalent to 1. This is very, very important condition. X of z converges for mod z is equivalent to 1. That means, so here z is equivalent to plus 1 or minus 1 only you can consider. All other poles you are not going to consider. So, here we are having a residue at z is equivalent to 1. Only one residue is there at z is equivalent to 1. That residue only you need to consider as x of n. Why? Because x of z converges for mod z is equivalent to 1. If they did not given this condition, you need to calculate everything. So, x of n is equivalent to only that residue I am considering. Why? Because they given a specific condition z minus 1 by 2, z minus 4, z is equivalent to 1. Now, here I am substituting this one here. I am going to get 1 power 18. 1 power 18 is 1 only. So, again 1 power n minus 1. We do not know the value of this. 1 power n minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1 by 2. That means 1 by 2. 1 minus 1 minus 4 that means that is equivalent to minus 3. So, here I am having x of n is equivalent to 1 power 18 into 1 power n minus 1 z minus 1 by 2 means 1 minus 1 by 2 and here 1 minus 4 that is equivalent to minus 3. So, now here we want x of minus 16 value. x of minus 16 value means here in place of n, if you substitute n is equivalent to minus 16, then you are going to get this value. That means 1 whole power minus 16 minus 1 divided by 1 by 2 into minus 3. So, now 1 whole power minus 17, what is the value of 1 whole power minus 17? That is equivalent to 1 only, 1 inverse is equivalent to 1, 1 whole power minus 17, you can write 1, 1 inverse whole power 17, 1 inverse means 1 by 1 whole power 17 is equivalent to 1. So, this is equivalent to 2 by 3, the magnitude is 2 by 3. So, here the value of x of minus 16 with this transform is equivalent to 2 by 3. For example, if they are saying x of z converges for mod z greater than 1. So, mod z greater than 1 means you need to consider z is equal to 4 residue value. For example, they are saying mod z converges for mod z converges for greater than 1 by 2. So, everything will come 1 by 2 plus 1 plus 4. So, all these residues will come. So, here they are saying only this converges for mod z is equivalent to 1. So, that is why I consider only one value. Otherwise, I need to consider all the values. So, according to the ROC given in that range, how many residues are there? That many residues only you need to consider, the, consider for the final answer. This is about residue method to calculate inverse z transform. So, here this method is very important when they are asking a particular sample of a signal by giving the z transform of the signal.